Hi, my name is Ron and this is Krista and we're from Daytona Yoga. We like to uh, talk about the chakras today and uh, tell you our understanding of the chakras. Let me tell you why I started to get interested in the chakras. You know, as I started to feel different things in my body, I started to study about them and find out why is it the way I feel? Why do I feel stagnated in one part, one part of my body? And, you know, did some studies and later I found out that there is different uh, areas of my body that might need attention. I feel, feel weakness in some areas. I feel stagnated in some areas. And that's why the emotions change. You know, if you have a car and this car is your transportation, like your physical body is, is your vehicle. It's a very sophisticated vehicle that you have is uh, extremely complex. If you had a cell phone and you didn't know how to use it, it would probably be, you know, I mean, you can do some things with it. If you sit in a car and you haven't read the manual, you might sit in and there might be lights in there and there might be, it might be overheating. But if you don't know about it, you could damage the engine. You have to take it to a mechanic. Your body is the same way. If you don't know uh, your body has certain emotions, certain, you know, discomfort uh, emotionally or physically. Ron and I have always taught that yoga is really about awareness. That's ultimately what we gain from this thing called yoga, this practice. And understanding the chakras gives us another way to understand ourselves so that when there is something that doesn't feel right, either physically or emotionally, maybe the medical field has done everything they can for us and yet we're still struggling. We still don't know why we have this disease or emotionally why we're still having these feelings. We can turn to, to the chakras as a way to, another way to look at it and to evaluate and to uh, try to understand how our body is working, not just physically, but at the deep emotional and cellular level. That's what it is. It's just another tool. It's another way for us to understand ourselves. It's an intellectual understanding but when you understand it, you can uh, actually start to notice when you notice something, you're like, it's a confirmation that, oh my God, yes, that's, we talked about that, you know, this day, and they did talk about this emotion rising. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And it brings your awareness to how you could solve it rather than just feeling helpless and thinking you have to go somewhere else to look for this you know why you're having this emotional issue why are you having this physical issue another example i really like to uh, touch on is like think of it like this if you want to think of your house you have a house with different rooms in it and you have different energies that come into this house like the electricity like the water like your uh, uh, drainage system and if the house electricity comes into the panel and it doesn't work in a certain room like let's say if you don't have electricity or water in your kitchen well where do you have to go to eat in the bedroom okay it's gonna be a mess you know same way if your body is not functioning in certain areas correctly and there's a weakness there there's a blockage there then you have put the strain and the stress on another part of the body. So that creates extra tension there. And if you put too much of it day after day, after day that part starts to um, become really tense. And it starts to create that you have deficiencies in some areas and you're overusing other areas of your body. And it gets really, really hard. I like this example too because the chakras really are all related and even though we try to compartmentalize them and they kind of have their different locations and their different characteristics and things like that, it's important to remember that they do all really connect and flow together just like sort of the electricity in our, in our houses and the panel, you know, the circuit system. It's like one circuit system. They're all connected and yet there are some, um, some things that we can understand about each one separately. In the uh, 
different ancient texts, it's uh, explained that uh, there is actually 72,000 <laughs> nerves that run through this physical body, the system. And there is junction points, like the wiring in the house, you know, you have different uh, electric plugs and all of that has to go to a junction that comes into that room. So there is different junction points and in the body uh, there is 114 uh, junction points for these different lines that come into the different parts of the body. And out of the 114, seven of them are the major junction points that are uh, approximately in uh, certain points uh, of the vertical uh, spine. So these seven points are in Sanskrit, they're referred to as chakras or wheels. And you can think of the chakras too as, like Ron said, it's kind of a general thing, but they are energy centers. So even though you don't necessarily see it with your eye, it's something that you feel. It's a, it's a, so it's not a precise thing. It's not a precise place or even, you know, the characteristics and everything are not specific. I almost think of like uh, like a light bulb, like each chakra is sort of a light bulb and it glows and it vibrates and it expands and at the same time it can become stagnant, it can, um, it can uh, be dim. Be dim. Um, they're also uh, believed to spin, so you can think of them as sort of this energy, this ball of light that's consistently spinning and it either can spin really fast or really slow or can spin at a more balanced rate and um, that visual might help us to kind of understand and think about exactly uh, this energy system in the body. Even though the chakras are known to be energy centers, but if that's too hard of a concept to understand, even your physical body has to uh, be balanced. Each part of your body, each part of the spine, the nerves come out of the uh, uh, spaces in between your spines and they spread to different parts of your body. So if you have weakness in that physical part, like let's say if your lower three vertebras, which is basically uh, your first chakra, if there's a weakness, your legs are going to be weak, you're not going to be able to move correctly. If your uh, second chakra, for instance, m might be a weakness, you might not be able to have enough drive to go through the day. You might feel weakness, you know, if your uh, third chakra is, for instance, uh, stagnated or weak, you might have a weak digestive system. You might have problems digesting your food or absorbing the nutrients out of your food. So even though it might be a out there, oh, energy system, how am I gonna see energy? These are connected yes. physically to your body. So it is extremely important to know the, the uh, different um, uh, parts of the body that these energy centers actually feed. Right. They connect not only to our limbs and our organs and things like that, but they connect with glands, they connect with the systems in our body, um, and as well as uh, emotional states within the body. The first chakra is the root chakra which is basically the foundation. It is a uh, Sanskrit word for this chakra is Muladhara. Color is red and it's connected to the element earth. The physical location is at the very base of the spine. Uh, some people say it's in the perineum area and that's a approximate location for that chakra. So think of this first chakra as being the foundation, being if you don't have a strong foundation, everything else that goes on the top is going to be uh, not as strong, put on a unstable ground. If that chakra is in balance, it gives you the feeling of security and groundedness. It is your connection with the earth, it is your groundedness is your personal physical strength 
This chakra is all about us feeling comfortable in the world. It really is about grounding, about security, um, all the sort of basic things that we need for survival. This chakra is very connected to the material world. Um, it is about establishing our place in this world. It is connected to material. It, it's a very worldly chakra. When we're out of balance here, the opposite of that, we kind of live in this fantasy world. We're not really on the earth. We, we struggle to be in our bodies and on the earth. We tend to be very greedy. Um, we tend to um, try to accumulate a lot of things when it's out of balance because we don't have the a security. sense. We don't have a sense of what those things are in, in our life and in our world. This chakra when it's out of balance is connected strongly to fear. We tend to become very self-absorbed, people who are workaholics and people who are um, a sort of obsessive tend to be out of balance in this chakra. Yeah, and actually the first three chakras are um, our survival mm -hmm. chakras. That is what's going to make us uh, be able to uh, survive in this world. The second chakra is your sex chakra or your center of creation. The color for this chakra is known to be orange. The Sanskrit word for it is Swatistana. And it is connected to the water element and it gives you, uh, think of this chakra as being the area in charge of your emotions of like pleasure, sensuality, sexuality, and uh, creativity. creativity. Think of it this way, it's the center of uh, reproduction, it is the organs uh, that are directly connected to reproduction. And that is your first sign of life when you first uh, became to existence in the physical body. That is where you came from. That's how the parents started life. That is what brought enough joy into the physical world to create the vibration. So these vibrations came into these physical life forms and um, that's where it all started from. So it is the center of reproduction, it is the center of uh, creation mm -hmm. and this creation, you know, it's not only a physical creation and reproduction but if that energy is channeled correctly and that's why all these chakras are, are connection mm -hmm. of them to, eat, to one another is so important. If that chakra is balanced and you understand that chakra, whenever you bring it in balance, this energy can rise up uh, through your spine. You know, when this energy starts to rise up your spine, the creativity starts to rise. And if this creativity starts to rise and it gets connected with your, you know, heart where you really, you know, add some emotion of love into it and you can express it, and you bring it up to, to your, basically to your mind and that is how you can create maybe art, maybe uh, different uh, things in the physical world other than other babies. You can make, you can bring other things into this world and create other things into this world. Uh, yeah, when it's balanced we feel very, we are connected to our sexuality so we feel comfortable in our skin, we feel um, sensual, we, our relationships are typically healthy and easy. Um, there is a, a sense of understanding that part of ourselves. When it's out of balance, we tend to carry a lot of guilt around that. We tend to uh, sometimes have sexual addictions or obsessions because it's out of balance. Whenever the chakra is out of balance, you'll find either excessive or weakness in that area which in this case is around sensuality, sexuality, creation. So even if you, you know, if you think of yourself as a not a creative person, if you don't know how to, um, um, if you don't make things happen, yeah, bring things yeah, into the exactly. physical world. Exactly. If you can't make the, if you can't make things manifest, that is connected with this chakra. Whereas the opposite of that would be again kind of obsessions. 
um, addictions, over overdoing it. Whereas when we're in balance, we have a lot of clarity. We we feel that grace and that joy and that sensual feeling that is generated from this sex yes. chakra. I don't think of them as an individual system. Mm -hmm. Think of them as all they have to flow uh, into one another. So if that if that center is open, you know this joy, this feeling of sensuality, this feeling of creation should flow into all your body parts, mm -hmm. all aspects of your life. People who are uh, lacking uh, the sensual and sexual energy in their relationships and life, they're having a hard time in the world. They have a hard time creating, they have a hard time functioning. So it's a very important aspect of our being. So let's talk about the third chakra. This third chakra is the solar plexus chakra. The Sanskrit word for it is Manipura. The color associated to this chakra is yellow and the element for it is fire. Physical location of it is your solar plexus. It's connected to your digestive system. It is connected to being able to uh, extract the nutrients out of your food and using it for the rest of your body. It's kind of our power center, isn't it's it? It's also really... the power center because that's how you, when you get the nutrients, when you get that stuff, that's what gives you the power to keep going throughout the day. And it's associated with our gut, with kind of that, you know, that, that place of personal power. Personal power, it's yes. Your, it's your trust, your dignity, it's your self-esteem. And um, will. Will has a lot will to do power. with the willpower. People who are balanced in this chakra and they're strong in this chakra, they're the doers in the world. They're the ones who take the step forward. And they have that uh, feeling of, yes, I can do this. I will go for it. A lot it. of self-confidence. Confidence and, and kind of... Um, trust and intuition to make things happen. And they're brave. They're brave people. Mm -hmm. And if that chakra is out of balance, uh, there seems to be the sense of fear, uh, maybe a sense of shame. And it could also be coming out as a kind of aggression. Right, you think the opposite of, or sort of excessive brave, bravery becomes aggression and kind of domineering and things like that. Whereas when it's balanced, it's, it's, in its appropriate way. Nice. So the fourth chakra is at the heart. And we talked about how the bottom three chakras are kind of that survival instinct. This heart chakra is right in the center of the seven and it is called Anahata in Sanskrit and is associated with the color green. The element here is air. And the, of course, when we hear heart, we think of love. So this is that place where we Think about our ability to be loved and also to express love. When we are balanced here, we are able to feel compassion. We have kindness. We um, are able to really connect with our hearts and share it with others. When this chakra is out of balance, we don't know how to really relate to other people. We are very inward rather than outward with our expression and with our love. In other words, if, if, if this chakra is in balance, you give a lot of, uh, you, you give love without any expectations. You're just mm -hmm. a compassionate person. You're selfless kind, and... uh, you're selfless and you, you give love without expectations. And if this chakra is out of balance, you seem to want attention. Mm -hmm. You need other people's attention. And you, you want other people to love you. You want other people to care for you. And if you don't get that, it comes. It might come out as a negative um, thing into your life. And you know whether the the attention that you're seeking is negative or positive. Well. Either way, it's attention. We like to be recognized. And this recognition, this, is, this uh, attention that people give us, it is basically like somebody plugging into us and charging our battery. When we have the uh, fe feeling of being appreciated, mm -hmm. 
Okay, that will, that's a positive uh, way of giving somebody else energy. When you walk up to somebody and say, I really appreciate you, thank you for doing this for me. That you are giving them at that positive charge without even them asking for it. That boosts their energy up. The opposite okay. of that, though, is, is sort of the people pleaser, the person who goes and has to, is constantly asking, you know, or doing things with the purpose of just trying to get, get that attention. attention. And, you know, it's not from a place of genuine giving and, and exactly. loving. And, you know, we think of people who are martyrs and those are all people who might be out of balance in that heart chakra. Exactly. They could sit next to you and the first thing they would start the conversation with is that, how they've had a bad day and how unlucky they are and how and this is for them to get the compassion from you this is for them to get you to sit down and go into their energy system and plug into them so they can suck all that energy out of you and you need to be aware of that's why it is so important to be aware of these energy systems and how you know, if you're sitting next to somebody and this person starts to drain you and all of a sudden you start to feel bad, worse and worse every second you're around this system. If you're aware, you will know what is exactly happening to you and you will avoid this situation um, very or, pleasantly. Right. Or find a way to, to keep yourself centered and not let that affect you. When you start to feel a certain way and you're not like when you have awareness of this of this uh, system the chakra system and you have awareness of doesn't have to be exactly you have you don't have to be thinking about it at that time that this is happening to you that oh I gotta remember my chakras no you you know this this system is just right now is the intellectual understanding of it but once you practice and once you strengthen these centers in your body, and that is, you know, a part of your yoga, daily yoga practice, be bringing the physical uh, power and the energy into those physical parts of your body, it feeds these energy systems. Mm -hmm. It helps uh, get those wheels of energy going. And from energy, it comes power. It comes the physical form. So. That is why it's so important to be aware of these systems and know that when certain emotions come to you that don't feel good and then you go and say, why is this happening? Oh, maybe this person is draining me. Maybe this situation is draining me. Maybe this thought pattern that I have in my mind is draining me. Mm -hmm. I'm and losing energy from somewhere. Where am I losing this energy from? You know, there's leakage going on. I better stop this leakage so I can keep, you know, myself uh, in the maximum performance that I could be. And when you realize that this is related to the chakras, there are specific things that you can do to bring balance to your chakra. There are certain yoga poses that you can do, certain activities that you can do that help to open and balance chakras. You can even just by wearing the color that is associated with that chakra, it can help elevate and, and expand and create that vibrancy that we want in each chakra. Um, and that's where the key comes in as, as it relates and connects to the chakra. You can do specific things that open it up. For example, the heart chakra is a very, you know, all of our postures that open through the chest, like camel or cobra, these open that chakra and they allow us to feel differently about ourselves and allow us to expand which then connects again to our ability to love and to be loved and things like that the root chakra that we talked about standing postures again ron talked about how it's really connected with our legs and um, it's not just at the perineum but it expands all the way down so standing postures you know grounding our feet to the earth helps us to feel more grounded and there's numerous things that you can do with each chakra. So when you have that awareness that, so I'm not quite feeling right here with this energy that I'm feeling from this person or within yourself, you can take a conscious effort to make a change to bring balance to that part of your body. Yeah, even, you know, there is physical things you can do, but just becoming aware. Yes, absolutely. Just becoming aware of a certain part of your body brings that awareness to that part of the mm -hmm. body and once the 
awareness goes wherever the awareness goes the energy flows mm -hmm. so as soon as you think about your um, fourth chakra your heart if you start to even close your eyes and meditate on that if you Absolutely. close your eyes and start to uh, feel the heartbeat you'll start to feel that the energy will energy change. you will start to feel that you know that feeling of love you'll start to feel that compassion so uh, you know it's not only the physical things it's many things there's lots do. of tools and depending upon what you need and what works for you you have all these different resources and these things that can help you work with the chakras and bring them to balance so we're moving into the fifth chakra now which is at the throat it's called a vishuddha and it's associated with the color blue it is connected with the thyroid gland as well which is of course connected with our metabolism and our growth and as we mentioned we're now in that fifth sixth and seventh chakra which are really much more de dealing with the spiritual side of ourselves whereas the lower three are dealing with the more physical material there's the center at the heart chakra and then the, these other three chakras are connected with the spiritual sense of ourselves and this third chakra is really about communication expression um, it's connected with sound with speech with that essence of vibration and has a lot to do with our um, confidence and our ability to feel strong and powerful with our communication and with our words um, i really think of this chakra that when it's in balance we are able to communicate to express ourselves properly to be honest and truthful not only with ourselves and with others whereas when this chakra is out of balance excessively we think of this as the person who gossips all the time who can't stop talking they they don't have control in this part of their body the opposite of that would be someone who can't express themselves doesn't have the ability to really understand for themselves and or then be able to express what they're truly feeling what's in their heart what they want to to share it is connected with the thyroid and so a lot of people who have challenges in this part of the body and even the Adam's apple really struggle to keep balance here so I see this chakra basically if you notice you know this is the first uh, energy center of the body that you can actually send out energy mm -hmm. into the universe into other people's ears into into the air so think of it you know how miraculous it is that you as a being you're capable of uh, from uh, this area of your body from your vocal cords you can take your emotions you know singers they can take their emotions and they can send that yeah. out and, you and can make you feel sense it. You can, it hits you right in the heart so that is a very strong powerhouse that you have here it is the first chakra that allows you to express whatever is in your heart whatever is in your mind if you can express that and you can and that is actually one part of being able to create this is how you create this is how you send out these vibrations of sound into the universe and you can relay this energy you can pass this energy to other people so that is the miraculous thing about this this center and if you think of this you know this uh, a lot of the uh, politicians a lot of the powerful people that you notice they have a strong energy in this chakra they are balanced in this area they're uh, the people who are you Leaders. know in the in the leading mm -hmm. uh, industry they're able to they're able to gather people around them and to follow them like Ron mentioned politicians movie stars singers these people who they draw a lot of attention they're magnetic they're the, you know their expression and their you know talk about that light bulb their light is extremely bright so let's talk about the sixth chakra the sixth chakra is the third eye which is right in the center um, the Sanskrit word for this chakra is Agna the element for it is light and oh the color for this chakra 
it is said to be purple. So the gland that is associated with this chakra is the pineal gland, which is about uh, one and a half, depending on the person, two inches uh, right behind the eyebrow center. The way I understand this chakra is that um, you have two aspects of, of seeing is that you have an outer aspect which is the eyes because the eyes can see the reflection of light uh, you can see objects with your eyes okay now the third eye is the inner eye inner vision is your inner is what you see on the inside when this uh, chakra is in balance you are able to see clearly you are able to um, have a good insight yeah, you can kind of see the big picture. It's that sense of knowing and trusting and understanding the world and the universe. Sometimes, for some people, when this uh, chakra is, is not uh, predominant, they have a very hard time to visualize, to mm -hmm. be able to create things. First, you have to create the things on the inside to be able to create them on the outside. You have to have so, that vision, that ability to see it first before you can visualize send it. it out. Exactly. We are ultimately in charge. Whatever we think, okay, thoughts are things. And whatever we see on the inside is what is going to happen on the outside because we have that power, we have that creativity, we have that, um, that uh, gift that we have this power to make things happen. So this chakra is, is, is extremely important for this chakra to be active because once you have the understanding of what happens if this chakra is in balance is that you can make things yeah. happen in your life. If this chakra is, is, is uh, in balance and you are aware of this chakra, if negative thoughts are going inside your head, you should immediately be aware and be able to recognize that. Do I need this negative thing in my life? Do I need to create negativity in my life? Because ultimately, if you think negatively, it can become very destructive in your life and you can really make bad things happen to yourself. If you are a person of faith, if you can see the reality, you know, if your inner vision has the power to create and if you know how to create, you create positive things in your life. You can make things happen, positive things happen in your life. When you do appropriate practices and this center is in balance and is strong, you can strengthen this center. Mm -hmm. So whenever you know you want something in life and you are able to visualize it in life and you are able to see it very clearly, it almost is that when you close your eyes and you go within, you can almost visualize uh, something that you want happen in your life and it becomes uh, it is you're so clear about it that it's almost a reality in your own mind it becomes real mm -hmm. and once that becomes real in your own mind in your visualization is when you are able to create so the seventh chakra the Sanskrit word for it is Sahastra and it's located right above the top of your head. Some people say that there's no color associated with it and some people say uh, the color is white. It's uh, the center of knowing, being. When it's balanced, you're, you seem to uh, have a very clear understanding and the information that comes into that is your power center where the power comes into your physical body. Spiritual power. So Spiritual power, power comes into your physical body. It, yes, it has to do with the higher states of consciousness. It's, these uh, chakras are all connected and interconnected with each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way I see this is where you connect with your prayers. That is where you, uh, once you have a good, clear 
knowing and understanding and a solid picture of what it is that you want, then it's where the faith comes in. Then you have to trust. know, have the trust and know the possibility, the field of all possibilities, the field of knowing anything could happen, the field of knowing that you can ter- turn your thoughts into things. It's just, you know, it's just knowing, it's having the trust. If that chakra is, is in balance or slightly in balance or in balance at times when we pray, when in very deep states of meditation, uh, we seem to connect to that, mm-hmm. to that center. And that center is connected to the universe, to the cosmos, to the divine. And once anything in your being sparks, and that spark, that connection, goes in through that line to the divine, to your connection to the to the creator, well, whatever it is that your will, it goes into that, into the universe, and the universe will provide for you. Universe is your provider. It is provides for you whatever it is, as long as you know with your whole being that it is the right thing, is the good thing for you. People who are very connected or prom- prominent in this chakra tend to be very ecstatic and experience sort of that natural high and ecstasy all the time. Yes. It's a very joyful place to be. There's a lot of contentment, which therefore when we're out of balance or when this isn't very strong, we complain a lot. We are discontent. We kind of don't have that faith. We want to find that way to blame and figure out what's wrong rather than sort of being open. Once you have a connection with that divinity, is that you know that divinity is your friend. You know that divinity is a part of you. You know that that divinity is is a field of all possibilities for you. That is not a uh, uh, a physical aspect. That is not a state of mind. That is a uh, a sp- very spiritual s- state where it's a no mind state where you have absolutely. Uh, no, uh, it, it's extremely hard to th- even th- try to explain that state or try to understand that sp- state because we have a mind and our mind is able to understand the physical things because all it can relate to is the physical things mm-hmm. because that it is a filing cabinet, the mind is the filing cabinet for all past experiences and uh, all uh, information that you have gathered in the past. Well, the, you know, uh, crown chakra is is beyond the mind. It is, uh, it is the whole universe. It is the whole field of creation. And uh, if you think all of that is going to fit right between your ears, <laughs> You've got to be able to understand that. Uh, I haven't been able to. I've thought about it a lot. I don't think there's many people who have been able to figure it of out. Of course, it's connected with enlightenment, too. And really, this this channel and this flow of energy is ultimately, you know, when we think of that grounding, that root chakra moving up, you can really see the flow and the channel and the energy that that and the work that needs to happen to then draw that energy so that we can experience enlightenment ultimately and the flow of this energy is not a one-way flow it's a two-way flow so if if this energy channels are open and you have a connection without stagnation from your root chakra all the way to your crown chakra well the crown chakra is connected to the divine Mm -hmm. the energy of of the creator of the whole cosmos, the energy of the sun, the energy of the moon, the energy of the entire being is connected from the crown chakra all the way and it goes inside of your body. So if this line is open, you can feel this whole knowledge entering you from the top of your head and it feeds your entire system. Mm-hmm. And if, if, if that flow is, is uh, evenly open, you can not only have an inward flow, 
and you have a good understanding yes. it, you can have an upward flow. So it's important to remember that this chakra system is a very valuable to tool for our awareness. And really, you can spend hours talking about each chakra, and there are volumes and volumes of books out there. But this is our understanding, and it relates to how we can better understand ourselves so that when there are things that aren't feeling quite right, whether it be physical or emotional, we can turn to this understanding and pull information out that will help us bring balance, that will help us to understand ourselves. And ultimately, that is what yoga is about. It's ultimately about awareness. This is just the intellectual understanding yes. of, of this uh, chakra system, but you don't have to even know all of this when you do your practices every day. The importance of this is that uh, these practices start to awaken your chakras and they start to make them more lively. So when these chakras become more lively, obviously you are going to gain the benefits. You know, you are going to get more out of life. So it's good if you have a little bit of understanding of them if you are very curious, you can gain a deeper understanding of them. Each one of these chakras is, you could read books, you could write books about each chakra because each one is a whole universe of its own. So uh, if you uh, just go to a yoga practice, you are already yes. practicing strengthening your body, your emotions, and you will slowly start to understand how they're connected. So thank you for your time and listening to our version uh, of the uh, understanding the chakra system. Namaste. Namaste.